Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We're going to do some hunting on Reverb, but first let's talk about something that I've seen has recently changed on Reverb. Take a look at this. They now show you how many sales this person has done and when they joined Reverb. I think that's some really pertinent information that I'm glad that they're doing for people, because just because someone has 869 feedbacks, that doesn't necessarily mean they've sold that much, because that number is a combination of all feedbacks. So that includes buying and selling, and not every order always gets feedback, so that definitely helps you more accurately gauge the seller. For example, mine is 1,253, but it's saying I've done over 900 sales, so that tells you I do more selling on Reverb than I do buying, apparently. So let's go ahead and see what we can find today, because I have not hunted on Reverb for about 12 hours, which is very unusual for me. So starting off here, Pretty cool looking Anaconda Burst. I've seen this catalog listed a few times. I mean, what is going on with this picture? <laughs> I can't quite make sense of it. Why are there so many fingers on there? It looks like it's on a cello neck because I only see what one, two, three, four strings. I'm not seeing any frets. <laughs> Whatever they were thinking, apparently this is just a old pamphlet about strings. I'm not really interested in it. That's crazy to think, this looks like 70s stuff. And yet the Ernie Ball Super Slinky strings still look exactly like that yet today. That looks like it's dated February 15th, 1982. Moving on here, that's a nice deal for one of these. I mean, it looks like our original pickups have been taken out, so that's a big killer on value. But as long as there's no breaks, cracks, or repairs, this is actually a pretty darn good deal. So besides the pickups, it looks like our bridge has potentially been swapped because that's ABR1 in style. Your knobs have been replaced. I'm guessing pretty much everything has been replaced on this thing, except for our truss rod cover there. But even the husks of these things, they can bring like 450, 550 bucks. This is one of the deluxe versions. So that means it's made out of mahogany instead of walnut. People prefer these when they buy them to make a project out of them, to refinish them because, you know, mahogany slightly more traditional than the walnut would. But in my opinion, I like the walnut ones better because they don't have the gloss finish and they're just something unique and all on their own. Ah, that's not such a nice headstock repair. So absolutely everything has been replaced on this. Not the best repair in the world. I don't think I could suggest that for 700 bucks. I think you'd be better off piecing together one on your own. But the value of those things have gone up so significantly. It was just like a year or two ago, like 700 to 1,000 to be like the top of the market, but then they reissued them. And now all of a sudden it's like 1,100 to 1,500 for the originals. It's funny how things like that work out. Oh, that's interesting. Spearmint. I highly doubt that is the official color. I think it's called emerald green. Actually, I think it's called jalapeno. You know, named after the pepper, if I remember correctly. Huh. But according to Andy Doyle with Gibson Customer Service, Spearmint is the official color? That's what kind of stinks. Sometimes color names gets lost to time and it just becomes green because nobody's going to search Gibson Spearmint. But this one is looking pretty good, but ah, a giant ding right there ruins that example for me. This is actually a pretty good deal on one of these. You know, last time we were talking about how studios are, you know, so expensive lately. What have they done with that bridge? Is that like a... Roller bridge? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I don't really see the point of needing a roller bridge unless you have some sort of a tremolo. One of your tuners is bent. This appears to be one of the satin finished models, which I personally prefer from a player's standpoint. They're not quite as beautiful as the full gloss finishes, but if I had to pick one just to play, it would be a satin finished model. Cool. Looks like you got your original bridge and tailpiece yet too. Even a hard shell case on this. I don't see this one lasting much longer than a couple of days. I mean, it's got some wear and tear, but if you can get it for, you know, 600 to 700 bucks with the case, I think you're good on that one. Move on to page two here. Anything interesting? Nothing that super catches my eye. The silver burst is cool if you like them. I don't like this version because it's got the crown on the headstock. I had somebody send me one of those because I've talked about how I love the 1968 reissues that have the crown because of the whole story of the originals, but I hate this style. The mixing of the binding on the headstock with the smaller Gibson style, it just does not look good in my opinion. All the classic antiques have that stuff too. And it's probably just because it reminds me of the robot guitars, but that is not one of my favorite things from the mid 2000s, that's for sure. This thing's kind of quirky and weird. SB350. So it's kind of like one of those EB models, except for has somebody stripped the finish off of it or is it natural? 
So this looks like a student version of like an EB3, but without the normal pickups that they get, like the mud bucker and the mini humbucker. You've just got two of those. It's top routed, so that tells you it's early 70s. And the frets actually look in halfway decent shape. It still has a case. That's a miracle. Dude, I like that. So it's a maple neck and they've got some flame figuring right there. Obviously the truss rod cover is not original. I really like that neck. That's cool. How much do they want? $12.99. I don't know too much about this model, so I'm not going to comment about the price, but we can do some research. Looks like here's one for $9.50. Yeah, there's a different one that's natural for $12.50. As far as sold stuff, a uh, single coil version would likely be less desirable, but here's one that's the same, $6.50. The other thing you have to remember is you have to look at the most recent ones because the markets change all the time. But it seems like $7.50 to maybe $1,100 would be what you could expect on these in decent shape. So if you can talk them down like a hundred bucks or so, I really think that is a nice example because not all of them are gonna have that flame figuring. That's cool enough for me that I would be interested in reviewing it, but I wouldn't wanna pay more than like 900 bucks in total. And that's a little bit too far from his asking price. So I think I'll just let that one be. But it is kind of a cool doofy model. Let's see what's kicking around page three here. Nothing too interesting. We're filled with a bunch of these parts. See, sometimes it makes sense to buy these husks. I know I've done it once or twice. Typically, it doesn't make sense to buy them and then buy all the parts to restore them. But if you've got a bunch of stuff in your parts drawer, then it can sometimes be profitable. Or if you just want to do your own type of project anyways. Which, Lord knows, I have enough parts laying around that I could do that. But I haven't found one that's like, you know, super interesting to me yet. But look at that, a 2020 50s standard P90. This at the store is 2,500 bucks. So you can save yourself 1,100 bucks just buying that husk if you got a couple of P90s and the know how to put a wiring harness in it. it. Might cost you $400 in parts to get that up and running if you can do it yourself. But then remember, you also have to add the case. Oh, Solar Eclipse. I think it's actually Would You Rock or Not number two. This was a limited edition back when the solar eclipse was happening. I think they made 25 of these. I personally think they're really cool, but they've got the rich light fretboard and they've got the black mother of pearl block inlays. Somebody just sent me a photo of theirs that they had just bought. I actually tried to end season one trade Tuesday with this guitar. It was either season one or season two because Chicago Music Exchange had one marked all the way down to like 2,600 bucks, something like that. I wanted it for 2,000. This is one of those guitars that I think is cool for around, you know, anywhere between like two and a half to three, but the brand new 5,000 price, eh, not so much for me. But what better guitar to play the song Black Hole Sun on? This is a pretty nice Les Paul standard. This is the Slash era standards. The late 80s standards receive a premium due to Slash using one. I forget what year his is. It's probably like an 87, 88 if I remember correctly, but finding ones that are clean and look nice. This is about top value, but I can realistically see this guy getting it. I mean, it's a very late 1988. Ooh, that's, that's an interesting back. You've got a lot of waviness there, but then the super tight wood grain. That's a strange matchup there. I kind of like it though at the same time. The only thing I don't like about these late 80s, early 90s ones is you got the natural back, but then you get the spray dark heel. It just makes me think of a heel repair or something, but it's just a characteristic of the late 80s, early 90s models. And we can tell by these giant screws that you've got the HBL Bill Lawrence circuit board pickups in there. They're pretty cool. That's not a bad price on a classic, depending on what's wrong with it. Nice. I've been looking for one of these things. They've gotten so expensive. I remember I was trying to find one for like 1100 bucks and there was a time when you could get them for about that. But now like anywhere between 14 to 2000 is fair game. This one, um, I mean, it's got a little bit of flame figuring within it. That's pretty cool for an ash body, but I'm really particular with these. I mean, I could see myself liking this one because the fretboard has got a lot of wood grain and stuff going on but it's in Switzerland, $500 shipping. It's This one's just gonna be too expensive for me, but these Music City Juniors are cool. Yeah, that's a shame. This is not going to sell because they don't have it labeled correctly. It's a Music City Junior. And people have that in their search list, so this isn't actually going to pull up for them, unfortunately. So if you don't care that you're paying absolute top value, yeah, you can get one of these today.
But the fact that that's still new old stock, though, I think those are what, 2014, 2012? <laughs> that's pretty old for new old stock. They still have one of the Lizzie Hale darks. That's a crazy price. Sometimes they just jack up the price because it's on reverb. Huh. So it's under their just arrived. So I don't think they actually meant to list it as brand new. Perhaps it's used. Yeah, so direct would be 1800 bucks plus shipping. So a little bit better than their listed reverb price. Gibson Explorer 90. Is that what I think it is? Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Is it really a lefty? No, that's just got to be a flipped photo. It's an E90 double. 2600 bucks. the version with the Floyd Rose. I've already done my E90 review, so I'm not that crazy about getting another one because they're just kind of quirky guitars. I really like them. I think they're cool. But that is a fair price for one of these. I mean, you could list it as high as 4000 It takes a long time to find a buyer who likes that, but the Scorpions fans, those fans, they will definitely buy them. I might have to make this guy an offer. That's kind of one of those guitars. If you know about them, you know about them. And it looks like I'm starting to see what I saw last night here. So I think we are all done here on Reverb. But hey, let's check out eBay real quick before we say goodbye. So we're looking at newly listed Saturday about 4.30. This is like prime time for regular Joes to be listing stuff. You get a lot of the same stuff on eBay as you do Reverb. That's kind of something exciting. So far, eBay has not raised up their prices. Just make sure you list it as a regular guitar and not a vintage one, though. Because apparently only the musical instruments category is the old 3.5%. Whereas the other ones is still like 12% or something on eBay, which is just absolutely insane. Yeah, so far, not seeing anything worth our time here. That's not the worst price ever on a 60 standard faded. These guitars, they're kind of surprising. So they were blown out at about 1100 bucks. That one's actually a pretty nice top, but you don't see them anymore. So they can still sell between like 13 to 1800. I mean, this is a nice example. And you just know that this guy bought it on blowout, so he's still going to make a little bit money if he sells for that price. The thing with these guys is they have rich light fretboards. So if you like that, cool. If not, maybe not so much. I would like to review one. I just have so many other guitars that would take precedence over it. So I'll leave that one to someone else because it's a fair deal for the current market. I had somebody asking me, how, how do you get rid of all of the uh, Japan listings? Because they annoy me too. I mean, sometimes you can find out about some really cool guitars and then go hunt them down in Japan yourself. But generally, when I'm hunting on eBay, I want to see what I can actually buy today that's not being sold by a broker. So you can just use my link in the description. It'll take you to the exact same link that I use every day to do my guitar hunting. And you'll be supporting the channel at the same time as it is an affiliate link with eBay. Nothing newly listed, probably just means I missed all the good stuff, but let's see what is ending today. Weren't we just talking about that one last time? 1800 bucks for a 60 standard, that is a good deal for someone. The top's kind of garbage on that one, so I guess I could see why people don't want it. I guess it looks good from that angle. Yeah, I remember we talked about this loan last time, so one hour left, no bids. It's a good deal for someone, not quite resale territory though. But unfortunately, uh, nothing too interesting here. Let's end it with this one. I keep getting a lot of people sending me this message, like going, haha, it's so funny, there's a double cut the Paul. Well, wouldn't you know it, there's actually a factory stock double cut the Paul. It's called the KZ2. It's a pretty rare sight to see. It is definitely not factory. I remember when this thing was first listed, they had advertised it as factory. I'm pretty sure it was this one. But then somebody corrected them. It might have been a different guitar. I'm not shaming the seller or anything. But one of these hacked up into a double cut with all the finish missing off the neck. I mean, he's dreaming at these prices. It'll never sell. I mean, the double cut conversion wasn't even done particularly well. It looks like our pickups are swapped out. I think six to 700 bucks would be generous for this one. Yeah, 2005 Gibson SG humbuckers. So 490 series pickups. But hey, we saw some cool guitars today. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.